All right, Algebra 2B, this is day two of the compound interest formula. Um, these problems today take a little bit more um, finesse than the previous day, so please pay close attention. This first question says Aubrey is going to invest 160 bucks, and she's going to leave it in an account for seven years. Assuming that it's compounded daily, what interest rate to the nearest tenth would be required for her to end up with $220? All right, so first off, it's you gotta figure out, is this a compound interest formula in the regular form or is it a continuous compounding? And it's the regular one because we did not see the word continuous there. So we know we're going to have our final amount is gonna equal our principal times 1 plus r over n times n to the t. Now in, in this problem right here, we're going to be solving for this rate. So it's a little bit tricky. It takes a little bit of work. So we're going to put everything we have where it goes, and we should be missing this r value. So we know we want to end up with 220. We know we're going to deposit 160, and that's 1 plus r over the compounding frequency is daily so that's 365 and that's 365 times the seven years okay so your your next step is going to be the following process you want to take the final amount and divide it by the initial amount so 220 divided by 160. And it might be better in the short term just to leave it like that. The second step you want to do is you want to figure out what this exponent is going to be. So you have 1 plus r divided by 365. Now we got to do 365 times 7. And that exponent is 2,555. All right, so we need to get this thing all by itself. Now, your next step on this one is you got to look at your exponent. And what you're going to do is you're going to raise this side to 1 over that number. So we're going to take this and raise it to 1 over 2,555. And what that enables us to do is this makes this disappear and turn into 1. I won't go over the, the exponent operation with it, but trust me, that's what happens. So you're going to take 220 divided by 160. And in your calculator, you're going to raise that to 1 over 2,555. Now that equals 1 plus r over 365. So let's see, in my calculator, 220 divided by 160 to the power of 1 divided by 2,123. I get that value. Okay, now I, I don't want to shortchange that value, so you might want to leave it in your calculator, bring the whole number down. So what happens, or what happened was, is this turned into that value. So now I'm going to have an equation. I'm going to write it down for this one. Normally I just typically use it all in the calculator. It would look like 1.1230, 1. 1 two, four, six, four, seven. And then that's supposed to equal one plus my rate divided by 365. Now at this point, you just have a simple equation. What you need to do is you need to subtract one from that, which means the only thing we're gonna have left is the decimal portion. And that's gonna equal the rate divided by the compounding frequency, which was 365. In your last step, you just need to cross multiply there. So the rate is going to equal 0 0.00124647 times 
365. So I've su subtracted the 1, and now I'm going to multiply by 365, and the rate in decimal form is 0 0.045496, and we need to change that to a percent, so we're going to need to bump it over two spots to the right. So it looks like to the nearest tenth of a percent, Aubrey is going to need to have the account paying four and a half percent interest. Okay. Might want to press pause here and you know just examine all the steps real quick. All right, now we're going to do one that uses the continuous formula. And these ones are a little bit easy because we get to use a change of base formula. So this one, and just like on this page on yours, I've underlined that so you can see that you're going to use the continuous formula. And that is your final amount equals your principal times E raised to RT. So this one says Nathaniel's going to invest 22,000 bucks, leave it in account for 20 years. Assuming that the interest is compounding continuously or compounded continuously, what interest rate to the nearest tenth of a percent would be required in order for him to end up with 33 grand? So we're going to set this up. Placing the numbers where they go, final amount equals the initial amount times E raised to 20, and we don't have the rate. All right. Now these are these problems are much easier. Continuous ones, many fewer steps than that convoluted process. On this one, first step after you set it up is you want to take your final amount divide it by your initial amount and that equals e raised to 20 times the rate and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the natural log of both sides so you're going to take the natural log of your final amount divide it by your start amount and you set that equal to the exponent which was 20r and now the last step is you're going to take this natural log value and you're going to divide it by 20 so it would be natural log 33,000 divided by 22,000 all divided by 20 and that's going to equal your rate. Many fewer steps. So let's see if we can get here. So 30 divided by. I've got my natural log part. Now I'm going to divide that by 20. And I come up with 0 0.02027. So the rate 0 0.02027. And we're supposed to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So here you got to bump that over. So that would be 2.027. So I'd say to the nearest tenth of a percent, that's a flat 2%. So Nathaniel is going to need an account that pays about 2% interest in order for him to make his 22 grand go to 33 grand in 20 years. Okay? much easier step. You might want to press pause and stare at that uh, process for a couple minutes or so. Good luck!